Good evening, church family. How's everybody doing? Come on, let's lift our voice and praise our God. Here we go. The stories of you shall way too good to be true. The things that you do never make sense, but they do. Oh, you're still writing my story. Oh, you're still writing my song. I have no reason to worry. Cause you never got in it wrong. We say that's a good word, that's a good guy. He made a way, hallelujah. It's the good news, it's the gospel. Amazing grace, hallelujah. We've got nothing to prove. I see the mountains you move. You keep breaking through. You're making everything new. Oh, you're restoring my spirit. Oh, you're restoring my soul. There's more to come, that's a good word. Oh, you promise me, Lord, I receive. Cause when you speak, that's a good word. Oh, that you'll be good, you're still not done. There's more to come, that's a good word. Oh, you promise me, Lord, I believe. Cause when you speak, that's a good word. Oh, that you'll be good, you're still not done. There's more to come, that's a good word, hey. that's a good word, that's a good God, He made a way, hallelujah, it's the good news, it's the gospel, amazing grace, hey, that's a good word, that's a good word. that you're inhabiting our praises that you're moving on our behalf that as we worship you you're changing us from the inside out we thank you for your goodness your love and your mercy in Jesus name Oh my 
days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have
Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of
our hands tonight, church family. Can we exalt and magnify the name of Jesus? Worthy, so worthy.
amazing night in God's presence, amen? It's at nights like this that God can change anything. Do you believe it? Come on, let's put our hope and confidence in God. Will you raise your hands with me? Jesus, I just declare a blessing over these beautiful people tonight. Your sons and your daughters called by your name. You are ambassadors, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for sealing us in this moment, for calling us by our names and purposing us with holy callings before we even knew we would be here, Father. You predestined things for us to do, to call on your great name, to declare your glory in every circle of life that we walk. I thank you that we're blessed. I thank you everywhere our feet step, Father God. You are giving us the boldness and the courage to step out in faith and declare your promises to a dark and hurting world. God, tonight I thank you that in our lives, Father God, we have a covenant, and that covenant is we should have a life with nothing missing and nothing broken. So tonight, Jesus, we bring you any broken pieces that are in our life, and we ask you, Lord, to heal it. We ask you to heal the pieces, heal the sickness, heal the lack, heal the unforgiveness, heal the bitterness, Lord. Whatever it is, whatever it's named or unnamed, Father God, whether it's in a deep part of our soul, God, we lift it up to you. Our brokenness tonight, God, and we thank you that you are able, you are willing to do that which you said you would, God. We stand on your promise tonight that says that we are gathered here as the saints of Jesus Christ, and when we call upon your name tonight, we will be saved. And if you believe that, let's sing your word. Cause you're worthy of it all. You're worthy. Come on. Pull from you. Pull from you. And to you are all things. Oh, you deserve the glory. I exalt thee. Come on, let's exalt the name of Jesus. In time. so grateful for the presence of God and how many of you are so grateful for a church that gathers on a midweek so that we can recharge and reheat so we can catch some more fire from heaven amen hey we're so glad that you're in church with us tonight welcome to church and listen if it's your first time here at abundant church we want to take just a little moment to welcome you into our house so if it's your first time will you raise your hand wherever you're at welcome to church come on church family let's welcome them as they raise your hands if it's your first time keep your hand raised for just a second longer it gives our ushers a chance to get you a card. On that card, you'll find more information about our church. Also, we have a gift for you as a way of us saying thank you for being in church with us tonight. And lastly, we just want you to know that you and your family, you're always welcome here with us at Abundant Church. Let's welcome them one last time. Fantastic. Hey, listen, it's midweek and we have our youth over here to my right. It's time for them to be dismissed. So if you're in middle school age or high school, you can be dismissed at this time. And can we give them a round of applause as they leave? We, uh, we love our young people here at church. <laughs> Loud and proud, amen. Fantastic, and lastly but not least, we have an amazing opportunity for you tonight. Maybe you've been a Christian for a while, and maybe honestly you've been feeling a little burned out, or maybe you feel like there's gotta be more, there's gotta be something else. Well, that something else is the Holy Spirit. If you've not uh, made the Holy Spirit a part of your life, if you've not received the free gift of the Holy Spirit. Tonight is your night. I want to remind you that Jesus told his disciples not to do anything, not to go anywhere, until they received the gift from the Father, the gift that was equal to Jesus in every way. So listen, I can just encourage you for one second. 
if you want to know more about God, if you want to walk closer to him in fellowship, the Holy Spirit seals us into the kingdom of God and it's his power that allows us to walk this life and enjoy the life that Jesus came to give us. So tonight, if that's you, would you be dismissed over here to Brian Kessel, Pastor Brian's over there. You can be dismissed. Let's give them a round of applause. You guys may be seated as they leave. And one last thing, we just, we have an amazing group of people here at church, our serving family. And everybody that's a part of our serve family, from our ushers to our nursery workers, our youth workers, our wonderful worship team, as you see this church happen, we make it look easy, amen? But it takes a lot of people to make this happen, and we need you. If you've been coming to church for a while and you've never been a part of our serve team, we want to ask you to just get a little bit of information. You can get the volunteer application on our app, or after church, if you have more information about any one of our serving teams, you can find that in the lobby from one of our pastors or at our information centers. Thank you, church family, so much. And will you watch the screen for the video? I'm Good to have you in church tonight. How many of you love the Lord on this beautiful Wednesday evening? Yeah, and how many of you are so glad God is on your side every day? Amen? Amen. Hey, again, good to have you. Thanks for coming tonight. I appreciate you being here. Uh, let's prepare ourselves now to honor the Lord tonight with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. You know, I always like to take a few moments and talk to you about why we give and what our giving is about. And, and uh, there's so many verses that... Uh, deal with giving Old and New Testament. So I just kind of pick some and as I feel kind of impressed in my spirit to share with you. And it's always important to me, and I know I say this to you all the time when I'm here, it's always important to me that we always make sure that when we give, uh, especially at church, but really anytime we give, but I'm talking specifically right now, that we give with the right heart. Can I hear a good amen? That our, our, heart, our heart attitude is right. Paul spoke to us about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. He said, don't give grudgingly. Don't give of necessity. In other words, don't give sorrowfully. The word grudgingly there literally means with a downcast look of sorrow. Don't, don't give that way. And then he said, don't give grudgingly or, 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 or sorrowfully because you're being forced to. Don't, we, we, it's not that, right? And I know that for years, uh, I, in fact, years ago, I actually taught this until I learned better. And then I came in one Sunday and told everybody I was wrong. I asked everybody to forgive me and started teaching it right. And, uh, and I used to teach that, you know, uh, that you live under a closed heaven and you open the windows of heaven uh, by giving your tithe. And, you know, I, I taught that. I, I taught it because I believed it was, it was true. And it was true under the law. But we're not under the law. Amen. Amen. We don't pay, God doesn't take, we receive, we give, God receives. Could I hear a good amen? amen. And uh, so there's a, that's, that's, the, that's the way it is in the New Testament. So we always want to give with that willing heart, that cheerful heart. I believe that comes from recognizing, as Jesus said in Luke 6, 38, that we give because we believe God has given to us. I, I'm giving because I recognize God's blessing, God's giving, God's graciousness. Or as one writer in the Bible says, God's causing the rain to fall, fall upon me. And so those blessings come upon us, and we recognize that, and we return a portion of that. And what does our tithe and offering do? So, you know, I'm asking all of us to, to give tonight. So, so what does our tithe and offering do? That's how resources come into the house of God, Malachi said. David said, that is the provision for the vision. And so God blesses me. I recognize that. I bring my tithe and my offering to the church where I'm being fed, the storehouse that Malachi spoke about. And then I give that, and everyone else gives theirs. And it all comes together. And then we have the resources that we need as a church to do what God would have us to do in our community. How many of you see that's the way it works, right? It's really pretty simple when you think about it. 
And so, you know, I just thank you again tonight for your faithfulness, your generosity, your obedience. We cannot do what we do without our giving family, just like uh, Ezra was talking a moment ago about serving family. Can't do what we do without our giving family. It's impossible. And so thank you. Your giving is important. Uh, We're grateful to you for it. I know what it is to work and to earn my tithe and offering so I can give it. I understand that. And I know you do too. So let's pray tonight and then we'll give. Father, we honor you and thank you tonight for your obedience, your faithfulness, generosity. And tonight we give the same way. We give tonight generously, faithfully, obediently. We don't give, Lord, because we're forced to. We give because we want to. We honor you with our giving tonight. We bring this in obedience to your word, to the house that we are being fed from. And we know that our tithe and offering counts. It's important. It's important to the kingdom. It's important to us as individuals and as families. So as we give tonight, we believe that it'll be given back to us. Say it with me. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together and running over in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed shouted, Amen. All right. As always, up beside me on the screen, different ways to give. All right. As always, you can give through the through the church app that you can download on the app store on your phone. It's free. A lot of great, a lot of great material on the church app. Hope if you don't have it, I hope you'll get it and look at it on a regular basis. You can also give through text to give numbers there. You can give online. We'd love for you to be a part of our downtown building program. If you'd like to be a part of that, uh, you can, we'd love for you to give an offering above your regular tithe and offering for that. That'd be wonderful. Thank you for that. You can also give tonight using our church envelopes. Uh, you can give using those here in the building tonight. You can give cash, check, or credit card using those envelopes, so that's available. The ushers have the envelopes. You can also pick them up as you're walking out. Hey, coming up, a couple weeks, Resurrection Sunday, also known as Easter Sunday. And uh, it's going to be a great, great time. It's a great day to be in church. How many of you agree? Yeah, I think if there's, if there's any day of the year where Christians ought to go to church, it's Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day. And don't forget, we're going to have our regular service times, 9 o'clock, 1045, 1230. But we're adding a 715 service that morning. So that's going to be another opportunity for you to come and to tell people, invite them. And then, of course... Uh, you know, we have Holy Week coming up, and we, we, we gather Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of Holy Week. The first two days, we gather for prayer, praying for each other, praying and seeking God. Time of quiet here in the sanctuary where we lean into the Lord more. How many of you like that image, right? We're going to lean in a little more and uh, just see what God would say to us. And then Wednesday night, we have Wednesday night service. Thursday night, we have pop-ups around the city where we can get to know each other. And then Friday night, we gather for our incredible Good Friday services. There's nothing, I mean, those services are so powerful and so wonderful. I really encourage you to come and to be here and be a part of that. It's going to be awesome on Good Friday, all right? So I hope you'll join us. All right, and what else do I have here? Okay, upcoming events on the app. Uh, Men's Bible study here at the church. Men, every Tuesday morning, (coughs) excuse me, at 630 uh, be great to have you here if you'd love to come. Great time to grow, meet some guys. And uh, don't forget, we have Before You Say I Do coming up. Not to be confused with Why Did I Say I Do. That's, that's the other class. Just kidding. All right. Probably wouldn't be a bad class to start, but here you go. All right. So Before You Say I Do, uh, it's pretty evident what that class is about. All right. So stand your feet with me, please. You know, we have some... Uh, employment opportunities here at the church and uh, you can get all that information right now if you're curious about it you say well you know I've thought about working in the church who knows so there's a QR code if you want to get your phone out and scan that all right uh, and then answer look at it and see if it fits your skill set and if you'd be interested in it all right uh, we'd love for you to think about it and check it out all right so are we going to sing some yes, sir. what are we doing hmm Goodness, oh, that's great. Love that song. Oh, my life, you have been faithful. Oh, my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness.
towards heaven if you want to do that and think about what, what we were just singing I, I, th- I think it's, it's so important to me personally and I try to do it every day where I take a, 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 at least a few minutes a few moments and just recognize God's faithful, faithfulness in my life and his goodness and his mercy towards me and towards my family and towards us as a church family it's so good to recognize that, to see it, to look for it, be grateful for it. Can I hear a good amen tonight? Amen. And say thank you for it. And it's an incredible thing. At the same time, I want to also talk to you for a moment about a thought that's in that song, that the goodness and mercy of God run after us all the days of our lives. The reality of our existence on earth is that we as a species were made in the image and likeness of God and we were made to be in relationship with God. We function at our highest level when we have that relationship with Him. He made us. We were made by Him and for Him. And He wants that closeness. He wants us to be His children and He be our Father. And we can all experience that by receiving Jesus into our lives and confessing Him as Lord of our life. The Bible says that we do that because we recognize our need for salvation. All of us in this room tonight, here and online, we all need salvation. I'm not saying we're all evil and beyond hope. I'm just saying we all need salvation because we've all sinned. Amen. And sin, by its very nature, separates us from God. But God took it upon himself to send a lamb. His name was Jesus. Who through his death, burial, and resurrection would remove sin as a barrier between us and God. And we could become the children of God by receiving Jesus into our lives and confessing him as our Lord and Savior. The Bible says that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The same book of Romans says, Therefore, if any man confess Jesus as Lord of his life and believe in his heart, God is raised from the dead, he shall be saved. There is a need for salvation for all of us, and there is a salvation available for all of us. Please hear me tonight. I'm not talking about joining a church. I'm not talking talking about shaking a preacher's hand. I'm not talking about doing something religious. I'm talking about having that moment, that moment of awareness in our hearts to where we recognize I'm separated from God. God wants me close to him and he has provided a mediator between me and him whose name is Jesus and that by receiving him into my life, God will receive me into his family and I will become a child of God. And when Jesus comes into your life, he comes in 
And he does so much, but the biggest thing he does is he washes away all of your sins, all of your transgressions. All of the stuff that you thought was unforgivable, he forgives. Because of his sacrifice. So I want to ask you this question tonight. Have you done that? Done what, Charles? Have you received Jesus into your life? Can you remember a time in your life where you stopped in the course of your life and you had that moment of awareness and need and recognition and you accepted Jesus into your life as your Lord and your Savior? If you've never done that, in a moment, I'm going to lead everybody in the room in a prayer and everybody online. We're all going to pray together. And as we pray, Jesus is going to step into your life. He's going to come into your life. He's going to sit on the throne of your life. He's going to become your Lord and your Savior. He's going to save you. He's going to make you a child of God. He's going to write your name in the Lamb's book of life. He's going to be with you for the rest of your life on earth. And when you die, he's going to take you to heaven where you will dwell with him and the Father forever. And it all right now is hinging on this moment of truth and recognition in your heart. I would do this for you if God would let me, but he won't. Jesus loves you. He has a wonderful plan for your life. And he wants you in his family. So it's time to pray now. So if you'd say to me tonight, Pastor, thank you for explaining this to me. You know what? I'm going to pray with you tonight. Tonight is my night to become a child of God. I'm going to accept Jesus into my life. I'm going to become a child of God. I'm going to pray that prayer with you. If that's you, before we pray, would you do me a favor? Would you put your hand up real quick? Just raise your hand up. Let me see your hand. Raise them up. Raise them up. Let me see them. Yes, sir. Thank you. Proud of you. God bless you. Others, let me see your hand tonight. Raise your hand up. Other hands are going up. Pastor, I'm going to pray with you tonight. Up in the risers, raise your hand. We're going to pray with you tonight, too. So wonderful. Keep your hand up until the ushers come and give you a card. All right, it's important to us that you get this card. All right, all of you, raise your hands, everyone else. Say out loud with me. I'm going to give you the words. You're going to give it the meaning. Say it from your heart, Lord Jesus. I thank you tonight for loving me so much that you gave your only begotten son, that through him I could become a child of God. Lord Jesus, I believe you died and rose again for this moment so I could receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. You lived, you died, you rose again. And you did all of it to pay for me. So at this moment, my sins could be forgiven and I could become a child of God. Lord Jesus, come live in me. Live in me. Be Lord of my life. Amen. Can we rejoice with these people tonight? What an incredible moment. Amen. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you for letting us pray with you tonight. So exciting. Uh, if you got one of those cards, scan it, all right, with your phone, the QR code part there. Answer a couple questions. Why? Because we want to come along beside you as a church and help you to grow in the things of God. All right? Okay, say hello. Oh, let's pray, right? We forgot to pray. Lift your hands towards heaven again. Father, we honor you and thank you tonight. Pray for our country. Pray for healing in our land. We believe for it. We stand for it. We look for it. We expect it. We thank you for it. We pray for our military and our law enforcement. Father, we ask you to watch over these men and women, protect them, and bring them home safely to us. Now speak to us tonight by your word and by your spirit. We open up our hearts and our minds to you tonight to learn, to grow, to increase in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now say hello to the people around you. You may be seated. Thank you. All right. Again, thanks for coming to church tonight. Appreciate you being here. All right. We're going to continue tonight in our Easter services flow. Uh, on Sunday mornings, we're looking at one aspect of what the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus has provided for us. Benefits, life-changing realities. On Wednesday nights, we're looking at another aspect, and they kind of go hand in glove. On Sunday mornings, I'm talking to you about laying up treasures in heaven. 
How many of you enjoyed this past Sunday if you were here, right? I mean, it's really a powerful thought. It's an incredible thought, okay? I mean, it's life-changing. If you thought last weekend was good, wait till you see here this weekend. Wow. All right? And, uh, and then on Wednesday nights, so we're talking, weekends, talking about laying up treasures in heaven. So on Wednesday nights, I thought it would be good if we studied heaven. What's it like? What's going on there? What's our future look like? All right? And so we're going through it in detail. And it is truly how I wrote this in my notes, right? One great benefit that belongs to us is heaven. How many of you would say amen to that, an understatement of the day, right? Yeah, that is a great benefit. And how do we get to heaven, right? Is it a lottery? You know, does God, somebody blindfold God and he throws darts at names on a board? And, oh, Charles got it. Oh, you get to come. Oh, sorry, Mike. You're, you're going to the other place. It's, Tell me Barnett says where the boogeyman dwells, right? No, we, we, are, we gain entrance into heaven through faith in Jesus Christ. What I was just talking to you about when we were about to pray with people tonight. Through faith in Jesus and by having faith in him, faith in what he did, faith in who he is, faith in what he came to do, faith in my need for him. By receiving him, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, therefore, any man can be in Christ, and if he is, he is a new creation. You become a new person. God imparts his nature to you, 2 Peter 1, 4. All right? And in doing that, we are forgiven, and when we die, we go to heaven. 2 Corinthians 5, 8, Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I want you to look at that again. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So here again, we see, obviously, we are more than flesh and blood, right? We are much more than flesh and blood. We are spirit and soul. You, the real you inside that body, the real you is a spirit being. You have a soul, which is made up of your mind, your emotion, your will. The combination of your spirit and your soul functioning inside of you is what the Bible calls your heart. And that's what, what we see as your personality. Your, what, it's you. Your body is not you. Your body is, you could call it your earth suit. It gives you the right to be on the earth. You leave that body, you leave this earth. All right? And to be absent from the body for a child of God is to be present with the Lord. Where is Jesus? Jesus is in heaven. He ascended up and sat down at the right hand of the Father in heaven. So you go where he is. Are you with me so far? Now, I'm spending a lot of time on that because a lot of us uh, were taught, you know, that there may be an intermediate drop-off spot called purgatory, all right? There is no reference, okay, I'm not here to pick a fight with anybody, but I'm not going to ignore bad teaching just because it might upset somebody either, all right? And there is no reference in the Bible to any place called purgatory. As far as I know, the only purgatory is in Colorado. They ski there. It's not hot there. It's cold there, all right? And so that's, that's not the way it is. Here is the bottom line. If you make Jesus the Lord of your life, when you leave your body, you go to heaven. If you refuse to make Jesus the Lord of your life, when you, when you die, you go to hell. Period. Oh, that's so harsh. Okay. We're not going to write a 21st century gospel to take all the harshness out of it because you're such a sissy. All right? There you are. Well, pastor, that upsets me. Why would you be upset? Make Jesus the Lord of your life. You're, you're removed from that whole equation. You don't even have to give it a thought for the rest of your life. All right, so let's... Man, I really opened up that can. Here we go. Sadly, most of us know very little about heaven. Very little about it. We, we allow movies and TV shows and artists or painters, our own minds, even common held religious ideas to paint our mental 
and spiritual pictures of heaven. I want to show you some realities about heaven. We've already looked at this. Tonight is the second week, and I want to show you some realities about heaven. And hopefully, you will be encouraged and challenged. All right? So here we go. Most of us think life in heaven, I thought this for years, most of us think life in heaven is a never-ending praise and worship service where we stand in the throne room singing hymn after hymn after hymn after hymn forever and ever and ever. Yeah. And we think of that, and then we feel guilty because that doesn't inspire us. There, I said it for you. Don't feel bad. Because that doesn't inspire us. And you know what we end up doing? We end up going back to living life on earth and putting all of our energy into that. We don't even think about heaven because this seems wonderful and that seems boring. And yet, into that reality, the Apostle Paul makes this incredible statement. Philippians 1.23, For I am stuck or torn between two things, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Here was a man that, whose mind, he's the guy that told us to fill our minds with thoughts of heaven, Colossians 3, 2. So I believe that if there was ever a man that did that, it was the Apostle Paul. Paul, we also know, went to heaven on three separate occasions, seen it, and said, it's far better to go there than it is to be here. Far better to go there than it is to be here. He was not the least bit torn because he was going to live, leave this cursed earth at some point in his life and go to this far better country. Can I get a good amen tonight? And so here's a fact. All right. This is important to know, and it's going to lead into what we're going to look at next week and the week after that. So let me introduce it to you now. The heaven that we speak of now, that we go to, is not going to be there where it is forever. It is going to change. It is an incredible place. We looked at it in detail right last week, the physical aspects of it. It's incredible. It's mind-boggling. But you're not going to live forever in the heaven that now exists. The present heaven is where God chooses to dwell with the angels and where believers go and wait until the return of Jesus and we receive our resurrected bodies. For study purposes, I'm going to call the heaven we now go to to wait, which was described in the book of Revelation in great detail, this incredible golden city with foundations made out of precious gems and the gates and the pearls and all the other stuff that's going on there, that incredible city, I'm going to refer to it as the intermediate heaven. Just that term doesn't appear in the Bible, but for study purposes, to help you kind of wrap your brain around what I'm saying to you. It is the intermediate heaven. But that heaven will change. It will be moved to the new earth at some time in the future. Along with the new Jerusalem. Hell will also 
be moved. Look at Revelation 20, 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So hell will also be relocated at that time. It'll be cast in the lake of fire. We're not doing a study on hell. We're doing a study on heaven, but I just wanted to point that out to you. The present intermediate heaven is in the angelic realm, separate from earth, yet it is a physical place. Are you with me so far? All right. The future heaven what the Bible calls the new heaven and the new earth, the future heaven will be on the new earth in man's realm. Now, this is important. I want you to see this. All right? The intermediate heaven, let, let, let me, I used this illustration the other, last week with, with uh, one, of the, one of the men in the church. Maybe it'll help you. Imagine you were flying from El Paso to L.A. and you had a layover or you had to change planes in Phoenix. So when you leave El Paso, your destination is L.A. But you stop in Phoenix. But Phoenix is not your final destination, L.A. is. Are you in Phoenix? Yeah, you're there. It's real. It's a real place. It gets real hot there. All right? But you're in Phoenix. But it's only an intermediate stop. Think of the heaven that exists now as that. Your ultimate destination God has for you is the new heaven and the new earth but between now and then, you will make an intermediate stop in this other spectacular place. Are you with me? And then at such time as God decides, that heaven with the new Jerusalem will move to the new earth because this old earth will be destroyed and a new one made without the curse on it anymore. And the new heaven and the new earth, I mean the new heaven and the new Jerusalem will come to the earth and God then, well, let me, let me show it to you. All right, here you go. Revelation 1, 21. Are you with me so far? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. God has always desired to dwell with men. Genesis chapter 2. He came in the garden and, they, and spoke to Adam and Eve. He's always desired to dwell with us. So at some point, the heaven of the angelic realm will move here and God himself will bring his tabernacle and live forever on earth with mankind. Amen. So those of you that have said, I can't wait to leave this earth and I hope I never see it again. You're coming back. <laughs> and I promise you, you will be happy beyond your wildest dreams. All right? Are you with me so far? It's important that we understand that because that's going to build into what we're going to look at the next couple of weeks, okay, on Wednesday nights. So, let me, let me show you some basic thoughts. Now, I hope you understand, right? I cannot show you everything that is said in the book of Revelation and other chapters because we would literally be here till sometime tomorrow. So what I try to do is I, 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 I think I succeeded in finding three verses that really give us some insight into what life is like in heaven, all right? And you're going to be a little in the, in, in the, in the heaven 
that you go to now. And some of you are going to be a little surprised at what you're going to see. All right, so here we go. If you got your Bible, turn with me or look at the screens to Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them which were slain for the word of God. These are martyrs, right? People that have had their lives taken because of their Christianity and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should eat, excuse me, should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Now, these verses contain an enormous amount of understanding for us to wrap our brain around the next few minutes about what it's like living in heaven. Now, you notice it doesn't give day-to-day details, but it gives us some important details that a lot of people don't know or are a little confused about. All right, so I'm going to go through them. You read it. Did you get a hold of it? You kind of, kind of, I need you to kind of remember what we read there. All right. So I'm going to give you some details that we can gather. We can gather that because it was true, these characteristics or these living realities that were true for these men and women are true for all the men and women that are there. All right. So here we go. Are you ready? So these martyrs all have a personal story and notice that that story extends back to their lives on earth. I've had people over the years ask me, well, Pastor, when we get to heaven, will we remember life on earth? They did. You will. They remembered their life on earth. You'll remember your life on earth. Hmm? Now, every time I tell people that, I have people come up and say to me, Oh, but pastor, there are things on earth that when I think about them, they make me sad. And the Bible says there's no sadness in heaven. Okay, now think with me for a moment. God knows every bad detail that goes on on earth. And he's not walking around all upset and sad and mopey and grouchy. You can know things, but also be aware of greater things. And those greater things remove the sting of the other things that you know. Amen? Hmm? I know I have loved ones that have gone ahead of me. I know the sense of loss that you feel inside of yourself when that happens to you. But I also am surrounded by all kinds of other joy and happiness in my life. And so though you may remember your life on earth, you're still, it's not going to rob you of the joy you have in heaven. Amen. All right? For some of you, that was a, that was a surprise. All right? But here we go. Your life on earth is remembered in heaven. Notice also, When you're in heaven, you are able to express yourself. You can raise your voice. The Bible says they raise their voices. You can raise your voice. What that says to me is, is it an indicates that, number one, that you are a rational being. You're rational. You're, You're connecting the dots. You're not just a spiritual blob. Kind of here, but not here. You're rational. You can you can express yourself. You can raise your voice, which proves to us that that you are capable of, and it indicates that that you can communicate. You're emotional. You're passionate. You're a lot like you are here. Only better. Amen. See, I like this. 
Because I was raised in religious tradition that heaven is this super quiet. Everybody walks around real soft. Everybody whispers. Everyone talks old English. How art thou? Thou be great. How art thou? Then we go to the temple and we're real quiet. We sing out of these old hymn books. Down here we have LED screens, but in heaven they have hymn books. (laughs) I don't think it's that way at all. I think heaven's loud. I think that it's filled with hundreds of millions of passionate, rational, communicating, expressive people that are full of joy and happiness and are living curse-free lives for the first time in your human existence. Oh, my goodness. Huh? Huh? Some of you are so loud with your loved ones when they went here, but up there you're going to be. I don't think so. I think, it, I think we're emotional. We're passionate. We also notice there, uh, we, like the martyrs, are aware of each other. The martyrs were aware of each other. We're going to be, I have people ask me all the time, Pastor, we get to heaven, we're going to know each other. If you know me here, you'll know me there. If I know you here, I'll know you there. Why do we think life there is less than life here? It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Maybe you never thought about it, but I'm going to prove it to you next week from the scripture so when we read it, act like you haven't heard it. But earth is a shadow of heaven. Earth is a shadow of heaven. So people ask me all the time, well, Pastor, you know what, what, are there trees in heaven? Are there trees in earth? Yeah, there's trees in heaven. Are there animals in heaven? Are there animals in earth? Then there's going to be animals in heaven. Are there waterfalls in heaven? Are there waterfalls in earth? Yeah, then there's going to be waterfalls in heaven. Are there mountains in heaven? Are there mountains on earth? Yeah, then there's mountains in heaven. Is there sky here? Yeah, there's sky there. That is the real, this is the shadow. Did you hear that? This is the shadow. That is the real. God used that as a pattern to make this. Just like he made you in his image and his likeness. Amen? Wow. Only just imagine how great it is because there's no curse there. That that place has never been touched by sin. There's no pollution there. There's no sin there. Beauty is magnified. Wow. So we are aware of each other. We are aware of God. And get ready. Based on what we read here a moment ago, you are also aware of life on earth. The martyrs were aware that their deaths had not been avenged. They were aware that the guilty parties were still running around. So they're aware of life on earth. They're conscious of it. Notice also, they asked God to intervene on earth. So they're They care, the people that are there care about what's happening here. I think I can tell you with great certainty tonight that your loved ones that have gone on are still praying for you down here. They want justice in your life. Did you hear that they cried out for justice? They want justice in your life. They want right to be done for you. Are you glad you came tonight? We're almost done. Are you glad you came? All right. 
We also saw there that the saints in heaven are in union with the saints on earth. There's a connection there. They are aware of how your life is going. That's good. I like to think about that. I do. I like to think about that. So then we all get together, we can talk about it. Notice also it said the martyrs were wearing robes, which means you have a physical side to you. There's a physical form. I don't know what it is, but you can't hang a robe on a spirit. So there's a physical form. It's not your resurrected body. You don't get that until everybody comes back to the earth. But we are given some kind of physical form in heaven. So we're not just floating. (laughs) Spirits. You have a physical form. Notice this too. Did you notice that the martyrs asked questions and God answered? Isn't that cool? So you get to ask God questions and he'll answer. I got a few. Any of you got a few? I got more than a few. I hope you're not in a hurry because I may take up some time. All right? So what does that mean to me? I always used to think that when I got to heaven, I will know everything. Obviously you don't because if you knew everything, there's no reason to be asking God questions. So there is a learning I'm sorry. Some of you are going to start crying. You're going to go back to school when you get to heaven. So you might, you know what? You should be thanking God you go to a church that teaches the Bible because maybe, maybe they'll start you in second grade. (laughs) I don't mind starting in second. Just don't put me in kinder. But I'll go if Paul's teaching. Or Joseph. Woohoo. Notice here it says they were waiting, which means that when you're in heaven, you are aware of time passing. You're aware of time passing. There's a sense of time. I'm sure it's somewhat different than here, but there's a sense of it. If there's no sense of time, then there's no sense of waiting. It's clear in what these three verses that we read that we are all one family. There's still there's a connection between the brothers and sisters in Christ on earth and the brothers and sisters in Christ in heaven. We are one huge family. We are all brothers and sisters together. Last thought and then we'll close. Seriously, now are you glad you came tonight? Does this, does this make sense to you? All right. Parting or going to the present heaven is not the end of your relationship with your loved one. The best you could say is it is simply an interruption. I want to say this. You have not lost them because you know where they are. Amen. Amen. They're only lost if you don't know where they are. But you know where they are, so you have not lost them. They're in a place so wonderful, get ready, Jesus called it paradise. paradise. Next Wednesday night, I'm going to explain to you, and you're going to be stunned what paradise is. You're going to be amazed. Amen. All right. Are you glad you came to church tonight? Are you enjoying this study? Is this speaking to you? All right. Stand to your feet. I'm going to let you go. It's good thoughts, huh? Amen. Yeah. And listen, I already did the lesson for next Wednesday night. 
I've got it right here. If you want to stay another 45 minutes, I'll teach it. No, I've got to let you go. All right? It's awesome. You're going to love it. It goes into even more detail, and it brings out some things. And then, then, and then the last week, the week of Holy Week, I'm going to talk to you about what life is like in the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. Wow. You're going to love it. Let's pray. Father, we honor you and thank you tonight for this time together. I thank you for everyone here. I thank you for what you're showing us. Lord, help us to fill our minds with heavenly thoughts. To fill our minds with heavenly thoughts. That we see ourselves the way your word sees us. Strangers, pilgrims, ambassadors to this world. A world that the writer of Hebrews said is not worthy of us. A world that we are passing through. We are in it, but we are not of it. We are of another place. Heaven is calling us. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you all. Be safe. Be nice in the parking lot. Don't forget your kids. Friday night, we have prime culture. All right, all you 18 to 30-year-olds, it's going to be great. Love you. Be safe. Take care. You're welcome. Thank you.